So does it look like we're inside of an LM? Well, we'll find out. So I asked ChatGPT to create a picture of that, how it looks like inside of an LM. This is how it looks like, we will see. Today, I would like to showcase you how an LM works. And first, when it comes to deep learning or LM models, there are two phases. One is the training phase. Basically, it teaches the model to do specific tasks using existing data. So there, NVIDIA made its bugs or is still making it because you need to use powerful and many GPUs there. Of course, depends also on the use case. On the other hand, we have inferencing. Inferencing means that we are using the already trained model to make decisions. But here, not so many GPUs are needed or not so strong ones because on the training phase, the model was already trained a lot, like a lot of calculations there. And in the inferencing part, here you see basically that the model is already trained and just on the input parameters, it doesn't require that much computation here. So what is needed to train an LM actually? And the answer is simple, millions to trillions of tokens of text data. You need a bunch of data there. Let's go more into detail what it means and what are tokens actually. So first of all, you have here, this is from Cisco Catalyst Center documentation, a classic human readable text, about 779 characters. And a large language model, well, it doesn't understand text as we read it. Yes, you heard right. So it doesn't deal with text. It actually deals with tokens. So you see here that these are tokens are visualized. So Cisco is a token here, Space Catalyst is a token, Space Center is a token. So you see here, there are several tokens there converted. And how does this conversion work is with a tokenizer. So with a function, based like every LM has its own function there, you create out of tokens, out of text, out of text-based characters, you create token IDs. And you can see here that Space Center has actually the ID 5955. So the language model needs to understand these specific token IDs. But with the numbers, like with these numbers, it's kind of tricky in order to understand the relationship, the semantic meaning, like how close are they together. And this is why, again, the token IDs or like the whole text needs to be embedded into a vector, needs to be vectorized. So with an embedding function or vectorization function, this text, what you can read here in the top, Cisco Kelly Center is at the heart and so on, this is vectorized into these specific vectors. And the vectors is, I wrote it down at the bottom, a numerical representation of data. So basically all these numbers, what you can see, these are the dimensions. And these numbers, what the large language model can basically understand, is the description of the language of the text above. So vectors. So the cool thing about vectors is a numeric representation of any data. Is it text, audio, video, the images, and so on. And all of these represents coordinates in an n-dimensional space. So like we have a multi-dimensional space there. Each dimension is there to describe the data in a way. So you can see here that it is a bunch of numbers to us, but it is for the LM very important to see, okay, what kind of uh, text, what we just uh, vectorize is basically semantical similar to the user input, for example. Let's make a visual example. I think this helps always, right? So let's uh, think about you in a hardware store. So you need to look for something like you would like to, I don't know, your desk, your wooden desk, you would like to uh, buy wooden oil for it. And think about this as the LM inside of a hardware store where you have an aisle and shelf. So like you have a bunch of aisles, bunch of shelves, you know, aisle 10, all right, there is a wood section, uh, shelf 10, uh, like in the middle, there is like the wooden oil um, a can and so on. So you somehow know in a, in a hardware store where to go, right? Like where the sections are. And like basically vectors or in a vector space, this is kind of similar because we, we have here the wooden oil can, and if we put it into a vector, like the, the, the basically only the destination of this can, you can see here that it's described. So somehow this can be related because an LM is basically probabilistic, which means that it might not be the right product, but it knows where to find, it knows where it is, and we will just pick this like um, uh, wood oil can here in the shelf, like in the middle, because this is what this vector is the most probable way in order to describe like with these numbers there. 
but we don't have like one floor basically an LM has like several floors in the end like n dimensional so with that it's maybe kind of similar for you to understand this example here so I talked about a bit LM training and LM inferencing uh, and I would like to go deeper now especially in the LM space so we've covered already, we need millions of trillions of tokens of text data, like a bunch of them. And what do we do now? So we are training it, or, or Meta, for example, or all the others of OpenAI is doing it. They are training it on the transformer architecture. So I will cover this later, the historical part for those who are interested. But in 2017, the transformer architecture was invented uh, by Google Research. And there, this is basically the whole architecture which is used for training the data. And the output is a trained large language model. For example, here, the GGUF file, like the file extension, is like a classic one if you would like to have like your whole machine learning model on your desktop computer. But what's in there? So in there you can think about lots of numbers, which means like weights, biases, instructions, how to answer the questions with the user's input there. So think about it as it's kind of like a compressed version of numbers, uh, vectors, um, from these millions of trillions of tokens of text data there. So once we have trained it, so like this is our model now, we trained it already, we used like a bunch of GPUs there. We are using this trained model there for LM inferencing. Inferencing is, is using a trained model. So we can, for example, have the input there, when was Cisco founded? And then we put it into the trained LM model. So now what it, what it does is you have the model output. But how does the output like evolve? So maybe you can see it like that it is on a token basis. So basically the LM model is defining like our example in the hardware store, all right, where can I find Cisco? Section Cisco, basically. Okay, let's start with Cisco. Then founded, basically, it says, okay, founded, okay, where was this? So, or maybe we'll still s s stay with the name Cisco Systems there. And then it basically every step, like every word or every token, what we have here is in a probabilistic way checking this could be the right answer there. So Cisco system was, because was is grammatically correct, um, because the verb comes on the second place, founded on December 10, 1984. And this is how the large language model is doing it, based on a, on a token basis or like based on the, uh, the previous output, uh, based on the following output, it gives you the whole model output there. So all in all, what are the opportunities and limitations of generative AI? So first, with generative AI, you can create code, text, audio, video, images. Like you can create a bunch of data. Does it make sense? Well, we will come to the limitations later. Conversation user interfaces, chatbots and so on, knowledge discovery, you can summarize texts, you can basically create new content out of it, you can format or convert uh, different formats there from text to JSON or XML to JSON or whatever you like or from natural language to programming code. And then classification of specific data. So for example, sentiment analysis. Like, is this like the, the text has this as a positive impact, negative impact? What is the sentiment of it? On the other side, we have limitations, of course, because generative AI is hardly used for prediction. For example, network utilization prediction. Or if you would like to specify specific classifications, like we would like, you would like to do customer clustering and so on. You can, like an LM can produce inaccurate and fabricated answers. So we know about this, this is called hallucinations. But uh, in the end, there is of course some tools where you can limit this. For those who are interested, how did generative AI happen? So I would like to cover just shortly, like a bit of history. So LLMs were not invented overnight. So let's start actually here in the 2020s. So you know about it. Large language models are out there. GPT-4, Gemini, BERT, uh, Llama, like the whole Gen AI boom. And especially 2022 when, uh, when ChatGPT was released. But the thing is that the tools, techniques and algorithms, what large language models are using, they go actually way back to even the pre-1940s. So if you think about it, like the foundation of statistical methods for machine learning was actually invented or they were invented before 1940s. Like the birth of AI, what most of the people see was um, 
in the 1940s and 50s with the Turing test, with neural network and artificial neurons like they were invented. Then further research was, were coming with feed uh, forward neural networks there, nearest neighbors. Then again in the 1980s there, uh, like convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, rediscovery of backpropagation, what large language models are using, reinforcement learning, also still very important for LMs in the end. Uh, and then the 1990s uh, and 2000, neural networks were coming up again. But the big thing, what basically ChatGPT like influenced, was this was the transformer architecture. What you see here on the right, you see also the full transformer architecture with a decoder and encoder. And this was done by Google Research. So in 2017, this was a research paper, a Google Research, which uh, didn't gain at first a lot of attention but later on they actually thought about hey this is pretty great so because of that ChatGPT basically commercialized it and then finally released it in 2022 to mainstream so with that gen ai didn't happen over time and let's see what will come in the future i hope this video is helpful thank you so much for listening bye bye